What's up, everybody? It's your boy, JP. And uh, I got a real special one for y'all today. I've been waiting on this. Couldn't wait to get my hands on it. That's right. You are reading that right. This is the Redmi K30 Ultra. And um, there's a lot to talk about um, with this phone, honestly. Um, trying to think where to where to begin. Um, just wanted to put my phone on vib vibration there. Sorry for the pause there, y'all. But um, Redmi K30 Ultra. It is the emerald green. Definitely a fingerprint magnet. It is absolutely gorgeous. It feels freaking amazing in the hands. Ladies, you know the procedure. As they say... Um, or I should say, as as my man Flossy likes to say, um, this is the six gig variant with 128 gigs internal, uh, no expandable memory. Um, if y'all have actually paid attention to my uh, to my previous videos, you will see that I was a huge fan of the Pogo F2 Pro, definitely one of my favorite phones of the year. Um, before that, I had the Redmi K30 Pro, um, and the Pogo F2 Pro was just the was basically just the global variant of the K30 Pro. The K30 Pro I had was the Chinese version. I don't think a non-Chinese version of that phone exists. Uh, you know, name actually named the Redmi K30 Pro and not the Pogo F2 Pro. I think the Pogo F2 Pro is the global variant of the the you know the uh, the Redmi variant um and if i'm wrong correct me in the comments but uh you know both of those phones were uh powered by the standard snapdragon 865 uh there's a reason why i emphasize standard snapdragon 865 which i'll get to here in a moment um i uh i love the uninterrupted uh pop-up selfie of the uh, of the K30 Pro, the ultra powerful Snapdragon 865. Um, you know, a um, couple of the caveats with it though was that it didn't have the 120 hertz refresh rate that the um, that the K30 4G and K30 5G earlier in the year had. That I also reviewed. Of course, you know those phones had the Snapdragon 730G and Snapdragon 765G, respectively, if uh, if everyone remembers correctly. Um, the 120 hertz displays on those also were LCD, and they did have a slight interruption with the uh, with the the um, the uh, the punch hole design. Um, not that that's a deal breaker to me. I, I don't have a problem with that design, honestly. But uh, K30 Ultra or K30 Pro came out with the uninterrupted display with the elevated camera, um, OLED panel, Snapdragon 865, but it was only it was capped at only uh, the standard 60 hertz refresh rate. But for the price, for the price, it you know still not a bad deal. The Pogo F2 Pro can you know which is again the global variant of the K30 Pro can actually be had for a hundred less than what I even paid for it. You know, you can get it for less than $400 now. I wouldn't be surprised if you could actually get the K30 Pro for less than that. Of course, if I was you, I would stick to the uh, Pogo F2 Pro. Not just because it has the Google Play services pre-installed, whereas the K30 Pro, you'll have to sideload them, much like I've had to do on this phone right here, the K30 Ultra. Uh, but I would stick to the Pogo F2 Pro over the K30 Pro, not this phone, mind you. I'll get to that in a second. But um, as far as the as far as the um, as far as the pro variants go, the Snapdragon 865 variants, the Pogo, absolutely. Uh, beyond it, just having the Google Play services pre-installed, um, also for 5G, the uh, the Pogo F2 Pro, the uh, the LTE and 5G worked here in the U.S. As far as AT&T goes, um, it did get. LTE on band two, um, and it was getting band five, five G on you know on 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 AT and T. Uh, I can't comment on T Mobile, but um, the uh, the K thirty Pro wasn't getting either one of those. 
Um, it does have band 5 for AT&T, but it's not, but it's for LTE, not 5G. And the problem with that is, as I've said in other videos in the past, um, AT&T is decommissioning band 5 from LTE completely and refarming it solely for 5G. So unless you're, so, so, you know, so that's, there's a couple of ways to look at that. If you're in an area that has band 5 for LTE, but they, or was LTE, rather or not they flipped the switch for 5G yet, they probably already have it turned off for LTE because they're, they have to turn it off to actually work on the hardware, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if your Xiaomi device, which a lot of them meet this criteria, have band 5, but not band 2, then you're going to be stuck on HSPA+. Plus. Uh, but as I've also mentioned, a lot of their phones do have band 2 and don't even list it. This phone right here is one of those. The K30 Ultra has the same bands listed as the K30 Pro did for LTE and 5G. But this does get band 2 LTE AT&T, which the Pogo F2 Pro did. Of course, Pogo lists it, though, whereas the Redmi did not. The Pro variants, keep, you, know, bear, you know, keep up with me here. I'm trying to separate them. That's why, so I'm talking a little slower, trying to take my time with this. I know y'all hate long videos, but I want to make sure I explain this because a lot of people like my videos because of the band explanations that I give, and I'm trying to do that. Um, I do try to cater them because I've gotten a lot of feedback that that's what they like my channel for, if anything else. Um, and, uh, and and I like knowing that. I like to have like to be that difference between a lot of your other reviewers that do these kinds of videos a lot better than I do like flossy like Jay will um, you know so many others I can name you know um, I mean the list goes on far far better than any of the content that I put out um, but and of course when I watch a lot of their videos one in particular they don't really know exactly what they mean by um, you know, when they're distinguishing between bands, they're, they're kind of going by their specific area. And I get that because I had to do that too, because I don't move around much myself, but I do try to keep a knowledge of, uh, of, of everyone else across the, um, the, uh, the country, you know, that may have different where their, their frequencies may be different. Um, you know, because the carriers have different roaming agreements in different areas. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons why T-Mobile has never been that great in Shreveport and still still isn't. It's getting there, but it still just isn't anywhere near where it needs to be. And that's because the reason why it's so good in other areas is because they have a roaming agreement with AT&T. But see, here in Shreveport, they don't, that, that roaming agreement with AT&T doesn't extend here. So it just kind of, uh, it really, really kind of takes away uh, from T-Mobile being a truly... Uh, forced to be reckoned with in my area. That's just in my area. Because if you actually ask me and sit me down and ask me who my favorite carrier is, it is T-Mobile, even though I'm not with T-Mobile. They are actually my favorite carrier because I absolutely love what they do and what they have done and what they continue to do for the industry. They're just not the carrier that I use because I can't. I, I, AT&T is a lot more consistent for me. But, um, but with that said, though, the... Um, the really the only caveat with the uh, K30 Ultra is the um, the uh, the fact that it's non-global. The uh, you know the Chinese firmware it doesn't have the Google Play services built in, but it does have GMS, so it doesn't prevent you from sideloading the Google Play services like your which is a common issue with your Huawei phones. Um, it's a lot easier than you think. Is it ever truly the same thing as when it's built in? It's not, honestly. Um, I watch some people's videos where they where they say it is the same once you get it installed. It's it's not. It's never really quite the same. It's really hard to really explain it without going into too much detail. Um, and really, the to be honest, the, the I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. The only the 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 major thing that I dislike is that um all of the apps that I back up from phone to phone. I'm having to manually install them whenever I have whenever I'm having to sideload the Google Play services, whereas opposed when it's built in. And I can during the setup process, you can select the backup to restore, and it just puts all your apps back on your phones, all of your settings are restored. You know, when you when you have to sideload the, the, the play services, you can't restore it. Restore from a previous device. You know, you have to kind of do it all manually. But I mean, really, 
that's that's really the gist of it honestly i really don't have to go into a big explanation you know that's that's really pretty much it you do have a problem at first getting everything to kind of sync together your contacts your bookmarks um but 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 one it's really weird because if you give the phone 24 24 to 48 hours once you have everything installed and you restart the phone a couple of times throughout the day it does eventually just work if that makes sense. I, I, I don't really know another way to really say it. But it's true. It just kind of works. Um, oddly enough. Uh, but um, but other than that. Uh, other than that. You know. Th this is one phone where I would say it's worth it. It is worth going through that trouble. Not the K30 Pro. But the K30 Ultra. This phone right here. Is worth that trouble. It is worth that trouble. Um. This phone is basically what a lot of people would would, would have thought the K30 Ultra or or the K30 Pro. I'm sorry, y'all. Now I'm getting confused. This phone is what a lot of people, probably including myself, felt that the K30 Pro should have already had, considering that it's less powerful non-Pro variants the K30 5G and even the K30 4G had, which were higher than standard refresh uh panels um you know uh honestly i would have been fine if it would have had a 90 hertz refresh didn't have to be 120 the fact that that the fact that it had an amoled panel as opposed to the lcd as the the lower powered non-pro variants i i would i would have made that trade-off i would i would make that trade-off any day of the week going from a 120 hertz lcd to a 90 hertz amoled do I no complaints? Absolutely not for the price tag. But you know what? Say what you will. I still think the price for the Poco F2 Pro is amazing, even if it is capped at 60 hertz. 90 hertz would have just been the sweet spot. A 120 would have really been unthinkable with an OLED panel. But lo and behold, here we have have it right here. The K30 Ultra has that. It has that 120 hertz uninterrupted AMOLED display here, 1080p, full HD+, plus, uh, 20 by 9 aspect ratio, if I'm not mistaken. It has the elevated or the pop-up selfie, whatever you want to call it. Um, all display, 6.67 inches. Um, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Despite what it lists, it does have Band 2 for LTE on AT&T. It does not have it listed, but it does. I've gotten a couple of other Xiaomi. It's weird because Xiaomi devices, there are some that list it, and then there's some that don't. But just because they don't list it doesn't mean they don't have it. Because I've had them before that didn't list it, but it did have it. But I've also had them before where it didn't list it and it did not have it. Prime example, K30 Pro. The K30 Pro did not list Band 2 and it did not have Band 2. Here in Shreveport, all I was getting was HSPA+, Plus, which is fake 4G, uh, 3.8G, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, um, um, but it did not get true LTE, and it sure surely wasn't getting 5G. Uh, oddly enough, though, it did have the frequencies for T-Mobile, not 71 and 66, but as far as 5G and, 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 and band 41, in 41, uh, you know, for, for the 2.5 gig network, it did have. So, uh, it may be a phone that would benefit T-Mobile customers more, which is which is kind of odd, especially with a lot of these foreign phones. But uh, the Poco F2 Pro brought Band 2 for LTE on AT&T, and it also brought 5G capability for AT&T. Um, and uh, this phone, even though it doesn't have them listed, it has the same cellular listings as the K30 Pro, not the Pogo F2 Pro. It has the same frequencies, believe it or not, that the Pogo F2 Pro had. Uh, besides not having the Google Play services built in, I would assume that this would have been a global variant of the K30 Ultra. Um, it remains to be seen if they do release a global variant, or if they do, will it be called the Pogo F2 Ultra? Will they keep the Redmi K30 Ultra name? No one knows. But as far as band support, it's a global phone. And the firmware has all of the English in it, as you can see here. It's just uh, having to side load the Google uh, Play services. But other than that, you know, fantastic phone. I mean, I, I and, 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 and because LTE works on AT&T Band 2 and it gets 5G, both were huge, huge surprises to me. 
I bought this phone on on a, on a hunch. I I I I I saw I saw the specs. Um, I took a chance. It was a gamble, and it was a gamble that I am very happy I made. Very happy I made. You know, when I was getting the K30 Pro, I knew. I was like, eh, I'm going to lose the money for the sake of making a video. I love this design. I didn't know that the Pogo F2 Pro was going to come out not even a month later. Had I known, I wouldn't have even probably even have picked up the K30 Pro. Um, but, uh, you know, no big deal. Um, but, the, but the K30 Ultra is, to me, is, is even better than the Pogo F2 Pro. I absolutely am in love with this phone. This is one of my favorite phones of the year. It keeps that design that, that I've loved so much. Um, it has um, it has the um, the uh, a, a, again it, it has the um, the uh, the awesome 120 hertz uh, OLED, and uh, you can see that it that it it does have uh, MIUI 12, which is the new operating system from uh, from Xiaomi, the uh, the Pogo F2 Pro, and the Redmi. K30 Pro came out of the box with MIUI 11. And 12 is a huge upgrade as far as the interface goes. I, I will be the first to tell you that because it's really weird. I have a love-hate relationship for Xiaomi, even though I think I have more Xiaomi devices on my channel than any other brand, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I love their devices. Their, their price-to-spec ratio is just freaking unbeatable. But their interface, a lot of times, drives me nuts. Um... Well, maybe not drive me nuts. It's not that bad. Let me let me back up a little bit here. But but MIUI 12 definitely um um is is a sweet spot. It it is definitely better than MIUI 11 and 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 of course the ones before that. I um I've really grown accustomed to it. And I've, and I've only had this phone since Oh man, um the hurricane here delayed everything. I had three phones coming in Thursday. And this is one of them. And they were all delayed till Friday. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I got this. I got the Galaxy Note 20 5G. And I also got the blue um, the blue G90 Pro. And uh, by Wednesday, I'm also supposed to have the Red Magic 5S. But I suspect I will get that by Monday, Tuesday, the latest. The way that the tracking is looking. DHL always comes through a little earlier for me. But nonetheless... Um, a thing that I think a lot of y'all waiting on that I haven't even touched upon, and, and um, this video is already getting into 18 minutes, is the processor. A lot of people, you know, that's what they're waiting to hear. Okay, Justin, this thing is less than $400. You know, it has the 120 hertz uninterrupted OLED. You know, uh, you know, you know, what, but what makes this an ultra over the, over the K30 Pro or Pogo F2 Pro besides the, the, the double refresh rate essentially and I mean that alone would be enough I mean let's let, let's be real at the price tag it's just freaking phenomenal uh well this they they kind of uh did something different here on this phone you know uh the this was announced with the Mi 10 Ultra which I was surprised by the fact that it only had the standard Snapdragon 865 and then even more oddly enough the Galaxy Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra had the Snapdragon 865 Plus. Samsung hasn't taken advantage of Qualcomm's mid-cycle flagship refreshes in years. And that's actually right there is what, dri is what has driven me away from the Note series because besides the S Pen, there's nothing differentiating them from the, from the Galaxy S that came out a few months before. You know, and, and, and you're better off with the Galaxy S's if you want to be... If you want to get the uh, the latest tech, you know, the bleeding edge of tech, because they always come out introducing the new Qualcomm chipset, whereas when the Note comes out with the same exact processor, it's old by then, the next one's fixing to come out, you know, and, and of course with the mid-cycles, yeah, the new one is still around the corner, but you still have an even greater, more powerful chipset when you take advantage of that mid-cycle. Uh, and if you would have asked me, which one I thought would have taken advantage of what? I would have said, okay, the Mi 10 Ultra is going to get the Plus variant. The all-new Snapdragon 865 Plus. And the Note 20 series is going to stick with the, with the standard 865. And uh, lo and behold, it was the complete opposite. The Mi 10 Ultra, disappointingly, stuck with the standard 865. I was, I was disappointed by that, honestly. Um, and when I read that the Note 20 Ultra 
got the A65 Plus, I was like, okay, well, that's a step in the right direction, but I noticed it's just the Ultra. Whenever I was reading things about the standard Note 20, it looked like it stuck with the standard 865 Snapdragon, but I found out that to, I found that to be untrue, and I saw that it also had the Snapdragon 865 Plus. Uh, and the regular Note 20 is getting a lot of heat right now for its build quality, so the fact that it does have the 865 Plus, I mean, that at least makes that $1,000 price tag a little bit more, you know... Uh, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It makes it a little bit more worth it, honestly. You know, I can't be too mad. It does have the plus instead of the instead of the vanilla A65, so I'm not really can't really be too mad about that. Um, well, now Xiaomi announced the Mi 10 Ultra the same time as this phone, the Redmi K30 Ultra, for their 10 year anniversary, as you can see here on the box here, 2010 10th anniversary. And while I'm thinking about, it, let me go over the stuff in the box here, the case. Same case that came with the Pogo F2 Pro and the K30 Pro. Always believe that something wonderful is about to happen. There's your fast charger and your cable. I forgot the specs of the fast charger. Y'all have to forgive me there. Uh, this does have um, upgraded quad rear cameras. It is, it is an upgrade over the Redmi K30 Pro and Pogo F2 Pro. But it's still not on par, I think anyways. It's still not on par with the Redmi... Uh, with the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom, um, and and its camera system, you you have to you you had to have gotten the Chinese variant because the Pogo F2 Pro didn't have the option of a, of a Zoom variant or whatever. The Zoom was exclusive to the K30 Pro. Um, and to my information, I, I could be wrong about this. I do know that the cameras on here are an upgrade from the standard K30 Pro and, and Pogo F2 Pro, but they're not quite on par with the K30 Pro Zoom. And I could be wrong about that. These these could be the same cameras on the Zoom. And if so, hey, that's that's even more awesome. Because this device is phenomenal. So you are, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, you're getting better cameras in the K30 Pro, but not quite on par with the K30 Pro Zoom. So, But a lot of the reviews of the Zoom said that the extra money wasn't worth it anyways. The, the, the standard K30 Pro had great cameras. They seem to have actually have gotten better with the Pogo F2 Pro when people compared them as well. So, you know... Um, you're getting that upgrade here with the K30 Ultra. But what about the processor? I just skipped. We're talking about the Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus. What does this one have? This one actually has the Dimensity 1000 Plus. Not a Qualcomm. And I'm going to tell y'all, the Dimensity 1000 Plus is a monster. World, real world usage, to me, it feels faster than the 865. Does it feel faster than the 865 Plus? It doesn't. I do have two phones going on three with the A65 Plus, the Note 20, and the Rock Phone 3. Uh, but as far as standard A65, absolutely. Absolutely. This The, the, the Dimensity 1000 Plus, it feels faster. The benchmarks aren't faster. They, they, they tell a different story. But this just seems so much, smooth, so much smoother. And that's not even because it has a faster display. I, if I put this to 60 hertz, it still feels faster than the Pogo F2 Pro. Take that with a grain of salt. Everyone's going to have their own experience. That's just me. Um, the Dimensity 1000, the standard 1000, not the lower powered 1000L or the more powerful 1000 Plus found here, which wasn't available yet during the making of the OnePlus Nord. The OnePlus Nord, when it was originally going to be called the OnePlus 8 Lite, was supposed to have the Dimensity 1000. Um, and for whatever reason, Qualcomm ended up, or not Qualcomm, OnePlus ended up making it with the Snapdragon 765G. And it actually took a huge performance hit. If they would have kept the Dimensity 1000, it would have performed a lot closer to the standard OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro. And that may be why they did that. Because they didn't want it to compete that closely to the 8 and 8 Pro. Because then it would have, because then people would have been like, you know, if it performs this good, this close, why would I opt for the flagships when I'm getting basically the same thing with the 8 Lite, later on known as the OnePlus Z, and then officially called the OnePlus Nord. Uh, you know, the 765G, there is a significant performance difference between it and the 865. Um, you know... Um, but you know, I didn't want to, I didn't really want to think 
negatively of OnePlus's choices. So I thought to myself, well, you know what? Maybe it was a band support issue. Because I do have on my channel a phone that I liked very much, the Redmi, uh, the Redmi, oh God, what was the name of it? The Redmi 10X 5G. And it was the Chinese version. There's no global variant of that phone either. But the Redmi 10X 5G, it had band two, LTE for AT&T, but 5G did not work. Um, it was one of those things where it wasn't listed, of course, but Band 2 wasn't either, but it, it did have it, but it didn't. It was it was like in between. The K30 Pro didn't work on either that I that I needed or wanted because 5G is not a necessity, but I want it. But Band 2 LTE is a necessity for me, and the K30 Pro didn't have either. But the Redmi 10X 5G had Band 2 AT&T LTE, even though it wasn't listed, but it didn't get 5G. You know, no big deal. Whereas, again... The K30 Ultra right here does have both of what I need and want. Band 2 LTE for AT&T and 5G. Um, but, um, you know, the more, I, the, the, the more I thought about it, I kind of thought to myself, well, you know, because the 10X 5G um, didn't have a Qualcomm processor. It had the Dimensity 820, a processor that's also very much more powerful than the Snapdragon 765G. Um, you know, but it, it didn't get, it didn't have a, you know, 5G support or, well, I mean, I wasn't getting 5G basically. And I can only go by what I know. And in my area, my own experiences. Um, so I kind of thought to myself, well, you know what? Maybe Qualcomm, maybe OnePlus wanted to make sure that the Nord was just as, just as, just as much of a global device as the rest of the OnePlus phones were. Even if it wasn't released in the U S they wanted it to work still. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I, 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 I got it, the Nord and, uh, 5G did not work in the U S, um, for AT&T anyways, but, uh, it had every LTE band imaginable. So LTE definitely was not a problem there. Um, but of course that's, that's not, that's not uncommon either. I've had earlier this year, quite a few Snapdragon 765 and 765 G powered phones that 5G didn't work here, even after AT&T flipped the switch, and I didn't get a chance to try any of them on T-Mobile. So who knows? But, um, you know, I thought maybe it was just a MediaTek thing. Well, I can't, you know, whether or not this works or doesn't, doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not a tail for the Dimensity 820, because this is, even though it's MediaTek, it is a, it is a, 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 a you know, the Dimensity 1000 Plus does cater to a much, much higher performing um, uh, type of device than, 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 than what you'll typically find the 820 in. Because above the 820 Dimensity, you have the Dimensity 1000L, the 1000, and then the 1000 Plus. So you got three above the 820. So, you know, they obviously are catering to different devices, different price brackets, if you will. And the 820, Dimensity is on the lower end. The only other Dimensity branded 5G chipset below it is the 720. Uh, or wait, no, no, you have two because you have the 800. Duh. You have the 800, then the 720. So, uh, you know, the 8, 820 definitely kind of sits there in the middle, kind of like the Dimensity 1000L does. But um, the Dimensity 1000L earlier this year was already performing, you know, on par almost with the Snapdragon 855. And the 1000 was performing better than that and closer to the 865. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and, and of course, you do, it's, it's easy to take the 1000 Plus as their direct competitor for the Snapdragon 865 Plus. And that's exactly what it is. And it does it well. It does it well. Um, is it, is it, you know, the fastest? Well, I mean, no, it usually isn't. You know, uh, Samsung's uh, competing Exynoses and, and Huawei slash High Silicon's um, uh, Kirin chipsets, you know, uh, they always come out with the, uh, you know, they're, they're actually the best example. They always have, they always come out with the latest technology as far as, as far as processor size. But, but then when Qualcomm kind of comes out with theirs, it ends up being a lot faster you know, because you know the Kieran, the, the 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 what is it? The Kieran ten twenty is fixing to come out, made with a the twenty, made with the five nanometer process. You know, 
which is going to best Qualcomm. But then when Qualcomm, the, the Snapdragon 875 is going to come out with that 5 nanometer process, and it's going to be a lot faster, of course. Um, you know, of course, we're not even going to talk about Apple. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this does get LTE uh, band 2 and 5G. I, I, have, I have gotten 5G, and I did not expect that. I popped my SIM in at the house. See, I don't get 5G at my house, but I get it down the street and everywhere else in the city. But I popped my SIM in this and was surprised to get LTE, and I knew it wasn't Band 5. I used uh, the LTE Discovery app from the Play Store, and sure enough, Band 2. Went down the street to my job. It was, man, uh, 5.45 in the morning because I had to be in at 6. Fr uh, it was Saturday morning. And um, checked my phone to put it on silent before I walked through the door, and bam, it had 5G. I couldn't believe it. I was floored. Did not expect that. Very happy. So, uh, and to my knowledge, this is this is the first non-Qualcomm phone that I have experience with with 5G. I know it's not the first because the uh, Samsung recently released the Galaxy A51 5G here in the U.S. And unlike the A71 5G, they did not change the chipset. It has the same Exynos 990 that it had overseas, and it is available here in the U.S. For the U.S. market, and it gets 5G, so that would technically be the first non-Qualcomm 5G, you know, you know, compatible phone in the U.S. Uh, but as far as ones that I've used, this is the first non-Qualcomm that that that's getting 5G. The Dimensity 1000 Plus. That makes me love this phone even more, even more. I mean, this is you know price to spec ratio. This is the champion in my opinion. This is the champion. Um, you know, um, a phone that I'm getting this week that I'll, that I'll be throwing a review on the, uh, the Red Magic 5S. A lot of people know I was super impressed with the Red Magic 5G. I'm getting the Red Magic 5S. 5G is going to work on that. A lot of people didn't even know it worked on the, on the standard 5G back in April. It does. They just don't have it listed, even though it's officially sold in the U S quote unquote. And, uh, that the 5S will definitely be a competitor for, for, for the best, you know, value to spec, you know, phone of the year, but I can already tell you it's not going to beat this phone. This phone has it all, besides the Google Play services not being installed and you have to sideload them. Other than that, I absolutely love this phone. I hope I've been informative, y'all. I am so sorry that this video has been over 30 minutes, but uh, I hope I hope somebody appreciates it. Um, don't be too hard on me. Like I said, I know I did a lot of rambling. I just wanted to clear the air here about MediaTek for one thing. Um, Dimensity 1000 Plus... Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's their version of the Snapdragon 865 plus, I guess we could say, um, not quite as fast, mind you, but it's, 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 it's definitely flagship performance. And I, and, and I do mean 2020 flagship performance. I don't mean 2019 flagship performance just because it may not compete just because it may not be as fast as a competitor. Doesn't mean it's, doesn't mean it's, um, it's last year's technology. This is definitely 2020 tech right here. Um, uh, going on, you know, the second half of 2020, I should say. This phone has it all, really. It really, it for the price, it can't be beat. 5G works on AT&T, which I did not expect. Band 2 LTE, which isn't even listed. I absolutely love this phone. It's the same design as the Pogo F2 Pro, and it just, just better everything. Better screen, better chipset, which I know is subjective. A lot of people may give me some flack on that, but to me, it is. I'm sorry. Um, it's not just the display that makes it feel faster than its predecessors. Um, I used the Pogo F2 Pro as my daily for a very long time, and uh, and when I put when I cap this to 60, it's still faster. I mean, and, and this actually has less RAM because my Pogo F2 Pro uh, was the eight gigabyte variant. And uh, and oh, that reminds me. Um, remember the Pogo F2 Pro? You only got UFS 3.1. With the eight gigabyte and above model, the six had UF was capped at UFS three. The six gigabyte model here with the Dimensity one thousand plus, you do get UFS three point one, um, and um, and you do also get DDR five RAM. Uh, I I think with the Poco F two Pro, I'm, I don't even think the six gigabyte model was DDR five. I think it was DDR four, and you got five with the eight and above. But I could be wrong about that. Um, I know me and Jay Will went back and forth about that. Uh, but this actually has those same upgrades that you only got with the 8GB 
Pogo F2 Pro, the UFS 3.1, and the uh, the DDR5 RAM. Despite it only being six, it is it is DDR5. Hope that helps uh, everybody. Again, hit me up in the comments, y'all. Don't roast me too bad on the um, on the uh, on on the length of this. Peace out, y'all. I got plenty of more videos coming. Um, besides the phones I've mentioned, I also got the Tick Watch GTX coming as well. I don't do a lot of watch reviews, but I do try to, though. But uh, y'all been to look out for that. The Blue G90 Pro. The uh, the Red Magic 5S. Uh, the Galaxy Note 20. And I think that's it. Not in that specific order. I never really know what order I do these in. But uh, anyways, peace out, y'all. Till next time.